Shotian did his PhD at the University of Illinois in Chicago in chemical biology. He then moved on to Scripps to do postdoctoral research with uh, Peter Schultz, who's across the street. Uh, he's now a principal investigator at the California Institute for Biomedical Research. That was the first time talking to such a large and high profile audience. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm wondering if there's a stem cell therapy for that. I would love to take some. Um, so, as previous two uh, talks, uh, trying to show is that we try to use uh, small molecules to harness endogenous stem cells for a certain uh, either proof of concept or treat certain diseases. There is no current uh, uh, disease modification therapies. And in my talk,
of our compound and has a critical role in the uh, counter-site differentiation program. And next, we'll, when we look at CBF beta, it's a, a transcription cofactor bind, binding to a transcription fi, uh, fi, uh, factor family, including ROX1, ROX2, ROX3. And this family of transcription factors are well studied in hematopoietic system. Actually, it's regulating hematopoiesis. Uh, but it's also known that involved in bone formation, uh, cartilage formation. And we did a, uh, a gene expression profile using our compound. And two more dramatic not come out is that ranks one and ranks two, no surprise, which tells us our mechanism is relevant here. And interestingly, all the genes related to ranks one are upregulated. And all genes related to ranks two are downregulated. And when you think about what these two proteins do in the uh, skeleton system, is that rank one regulating chondrocyte differentiation. Rank two improve osteoblast differentiation, which also tells us at the time of inducing chondrocyte differentiation with the compound, we're also suppressing uh, osteoblast differentiation, where that likely is the uh, specificity come from. And furthermore, we look at gene expression of uh, Runs family proteins and CBF beta in mesenchymal stem cells and also relevant downstream uh, cells. We found that Runs one indeed is uh, expressed at a high level in mesenchymal stem cells. So is CBF beta, which tells us this program is really critical for uh, mesenchymal stem cell biology. And furthermore, when we, down, uh, when we knock down Runs one expression in mesenchymal stem cells, again, we have a similar effect as CBF beta knocked down is that we block the effect of our compound in the counter-site differentiation. So then we, uh, based on this, we propose our possible mechanism is that in right state of mesenchymal stem cells, uh, CBF beta is sequestered in cytoplasma by binding to filament A. And when we add compound, it will replace and release CBF beta with Subsequently, will translocate into nuclei, bind to its partner, ranks one here. And that interaction turn on the transcription program in the nuclei, which actually is a key transcription program regulating mesenchymal stem, uh, stem cell differentiation toward chondrocyte lineage. And in summary, we have a molecule that from a phenotypic screen that gave us the phenotype that differentiates mesenchymal stem cells toward chondrocytes both in vitro and in vivo. Uh, and uh, we found the target is uh, filament A, which can subsequently uh, direct to our uh, finding of RUNX1 CBF beta transcription program uh, play a critical role in this whole process. And then one thing I want to point out that you see this target and subsequent mechanism. When you think about small molecule, this is very unconventional uh, uh, mechanism that you think small molecule target. Most time we're talking about small molecules, thinking about probably its enzymatic inhibitor for kinases, for proteases, for phosphatase. And, but small molecule actually can do more than that. They can interrupt protein protein X and they can influence protein uh, folding or subfolding, subset localization. So this also gave us a chance that to manipulate protein function out of the box of traditional way of drug discovery uh, uh, program. So I would like to conclude my talk by uh, acknowledging all my colleagues that contribute significantly to the project and also uh, our founding uh, research firm partially supported this program. Thank you very much. I would like to take some questions. So much, Shotian. That's great as usual. Uh, I think we have time for one, one question. That's, that's a very good question. Actually, that's exactly the key question we asked when we saw this protein as our target, is that, so this is the structure of uh, filament A. 
actually to the very end of n terminus, that's where it binds to active network. And the C terminus is the one that will form a homodimer. And also uh, that will give you the cross-linking effect on the uh, active network. And also other part like all these uh, immunoglobin-like domains, individual ones or combination of several of them will have a interaction interface with other partner proteins. That's why around these runs, we look at literature, there's a long list of all genes or proteins that interact with this protein. And we check several of them, and we even check where this protein is upon compound treatment, say uh, in the uh, insoluble uh, actin uh, uh, polymer fraction or in the soluble fraction. Actually, we don't see any uh, change upon compound treatment. This tells us it's not having influence on its association with the uh, actin network. And then we look at the specific reason. That's how we found the specific uh, uh, protein that is with known and, and clear effect in uh, chondrocyte differentiation. I mean, I'm not saying this is the only possible downstream target. We sure possibly have other protein there binding and maybe replaced by the compound. And that we are not digging too far, uh, too far into that yet. And also that also very likely will be tissue specific or cell type specific. Maybe in other cell population will have a different uh, partner that will be affected. Yeah, but that's, yeah, absolutely that's a, that's a concern, yeah.